Good morning. Thank you for joining us today. I'm, as uh, Tanya said, I'm Chief uh, Constable Mark Newfeld. Before we begin, I want to provide just a bit of a short agenda in terms of how we'll sort of uh, direct the flow of today's news conference. We're here today to announce an exciting new partnership between the Calgary Police Service, the BOLO program, and Calgary Crime Stoppers. I will provide an overview of a five-year-old homicide case that spurred this partnership in order to bring, bring to justice a man wanted on warrants for the first degree murder of a Calgarian. Following my overview, I'll invite Tamara Cherry to speak. She will share a brief statement from the family of Hussein Merhi, who was tragically killed five years ago. Max Langeois from the BOLO program will then speak next, and he'll provide an overview of their work with the Calgary Police Service to profile this particular homicide investigation. And lastly, we'll hear from Calgary Crime Stoppers Association President Sudeep Bergara in relation to the involvement of Calgary Crime Stoppers. Five years ago, Hussein Merhi was shot to death in an alley in the middle of the afternoon. We, can, we continue in our search to find one of the men responsible for his murder. At approximately 2.30 on Sunday, December 13th, 2015, police responded to reports of a shooting in an alley in the 100 block of Del Rey Road in Northeast Calgary. When they arrived, they found Mr. Merhi, who was 26 at the time, in medical distress. Sadly, he died at the scene. Following an extensive investigation by CPS Homicide Unit, two suspects were identified and subsequently charged. In July of 2019, Joseph True, 26, of Calgary, was charged with one count of being an, an accessory after the fact to the offense of murder. The other man remains outstanding. That individual is identified as Kyer Brian Granado, 24, of Calgary. He is currently wanted on a Canada-wide warrant for the first-degree murder of Hussein Merhi. We believe this was a targeted murder as Granado and Mr. Merhi were known to one another. Over the years and since issuing the warrant, we've reached out several times asking for public assistance and witnesses to aid in this particular investigation. Today is different. We are certain that someone knows where Mr. Granado is and we are appealing directly to those who know of his whereabouts. To the relatives, friends, and associates of Brian Granado, I want to remind you that you could face charges for being an accessory after the fact to the offense of murder if you assist him in evading arrest. Let me remind that in Canada, such a charge is a very serious one and makes individuals liable for imprisonment up to life. And let me be clear, in relation to this particular homicide investigation, we've already charged one individual for being an accessory after the fact, and we will charge more if it's necessary. This is a personal message to Mr. Granado. There is nowhere to go, and this investigation will not end until you are apprehended. So do the right thing. Contact a lawyer and turn yourself in. I also want to remind citizens that your safety is paramount in relation to this investigation and this appeal. We'd ask that you not take action to apprehend Mr. Granado yourself. If you see him on the street or otherwise become aware of his whereabouts, I encourage you to call 911 immediately. If you have a tip to submit, please contact Crime Stoppers. Your tip will be anonymous, and as you're aware, Crime Stoppers does have a system to handle reward payments anonymously as well. As I mentioned earlier, this homicide occurred five years ago. Mr. Merhi's family have prepared a statement on how this tragedy has impacted them. And I'd like to call Ms. Tamara Cherry forward to read that now. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chief. Get that sanitizer on okay so this is a statement that was prepared by the family of hussein merhi first we would like to thank the calgary police service they have shown great compassion during our darkest days and have worked tirelessly to ensure justice is served and to make our streets safer we would also like to thank the bolo program 
for organizing this campaign and funding the $100,000 reward and Crime Stoppers for facilitating it. It has been more than five years since our son, our brother, our uncle, our friend was murdered. You might think that by now life would be easy, but you would be mistaken. Every happy occasion is punctuated with sadness because Hussein isn't with us. Every day brings tears, thoughts, and prayers for this incredible human being who has been inexplicably missing from our lives from every birthday, every phone call, every family gathering for more than five years. Life has not gotten easy. Every day we think of Hussein, pray for Hussein, cry for Hussein. Every day for more than five years has been hard. Hussein was somebody who mattered. His parents, brothers, and sister loved him dearly. He was the youngest of five kids and an uncle to his nieces and nephews who miss him very much. They lost a friend. The pain of our loss has been exacerbated by the senselessness of it all. Hussein wasn't a bad guy. He was good through and through. People liked him, never had a bad thing to say about him, and yet he was murdered. We are an extremely private family. As such, having our loved ones murder talked about on the news and social media, and now on even on billboards, is extremely difficult for us. But we are releasing this statement because we want whoever killed Hussein behind bars. Not for us. Hussein is not coming back, and there will therefore never be real justice or closure for our family. We want those responsible locked up for the sake of our community. What we've endured for the past five years is something no family should experience. So please, if you know something, pick up the phone, call police, call Crime Stoppers, say something. It won't mend our broken heart. Our, they won't mend our broken hearts, but our community will be safer for it. Thank you, the Marahi family. And I would just like to say, on behalf of the family, again, thank you to everybody involved in this campaign. But they are requesting their privacy, as I mentioned. Uh, in the statement, as they mentioned, they're extremely private, so they ask that no members of the media uh, reach out to them. Thank you. Good morning. I'm pleased to be in Calgary this morning to launch the Kira Brand Granado amplification campaign. The Bolo program is a Canadian public safety innovation project launched in Toronto in May 2018. The program has since gradually expanded to other Canadian cities, including Vancouver, Edmonton, and now Calgary. The Bolo program's mission is to encourage citizens to be on the lookout for Canada's most wanted so they can help keep our communities safe by submitting tips to help the police to arrest these dangerous suspects. We do that by acting as an amplifier for priority wanted notices. Simply put, we make sure Canadians get to see these notices, and we do that by reaching them at the right time, at the right place, and by using the right innovative means. Some important facts about the BOTO program were completely funded by a Canadian charitable organization, so our campaigns and rewards don't cost a dime to taxpayers. We are 100% complementary to police services, that means we never interfere with police activities or investigations. As such, we exclusively work with case information that's already available to the public. And then what we do is to take that information, we repackage it, and we boost it to unprecedented levels using all relevant channels. We do not, this is important, we do not collect tips. We rather direct the public to proper tip lines identified by police services like Crime Stoppers. Over the next six weeks, millions of Canadians, especially in Calgary, will come across our ads featuring the Kier brand Granado wanted notice. To give you an idea of the magnitude of the campaign we're launching, will gradually go up, as of today, in various strategic sectors of Calgary, seven digital billboards, two static billboards, and nine bus, shelter, nine bus shelters featuring our ads. One hour ago, a massive social media promoted campaign launched on Facebook and Instagram. Thousands of flyers and posters have been printing out by the Bolo program for use and distribution by the Calgary Police Service. Some campaign activities will also take place in Edmonton, where the suspect may be. Furthermore, in cooperation with CPS, the Bolo program has wrapped a cube van with the Granado wanted notice. Over the next days and weeks, CPS members will drive this van in various strategic sectors of Calgary. 
In partnership with Calgary Crime Stoppers, the Bodo program is also pleased to offer a reward up to $100,000 for any information leading to the arrest of Kiara Brown Granado. Just to be clear, this reward will be paid to any tipster whose tip led to the arrest of Granado. Granado's trial and conviction have nothing to do with the reward being paid. Your tip is considered successful if the suspect is arrested, period. Crime Stoppers has a well-established system not only to handle tips anonymously, but also to handle reward payments in a completely anonymous way. Take note that this $100,000 reward is only available until July 20th, 2021. So if you have something to say, say it now. I want to thank the leaders and members of CPS and Calgary Crime Stoppers for their tremendous support. Uh, Bodo program campaigns are indeed free, but they do require a lot of uh, innova uh, innovative mindsets and also a lot of planning. And I can tell you, we wouldn't be here today without uh, the devotion of CPS and Calgary Crime Stoppers to keep Calgary safe. In conclusion, uh, I would like to emphasize what Chief Constable Neufeld mentioned earlier. Mr. Granado, with the amplification campaign we're launching today, everyone in Calgary, Alberta, and Canada will not only know that you're wanted for murder, everyone will also know that there's a $100,000 reward for tips leading to your arrest. And with that reward, you can rest assured that the loyalty of your friends and associates will be tested. So there's nowhere to go, there's nowhere to hide, and there's certainly only one right thing to do. Grab the phone, call a lawyer, and make arrangements to turn yourself in. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it is very important uh, for crime stoppers to serve our community, to apprehend our criminals. And in this case, if you do contact, uh, if you have any tips, please contact Crime Stoppers. Your tip will be anonymous. No uh, personal uh, questions will be asked of you. Your identity will be uh, protected, even in the case you receive any reward. This reward is available for an initial period of six months, which is starting today, goes until July 20, 20th of this year. So if you have a tip to submit, submit it now uh, to be eligible for this award. The outcome of Granado's trial has nothing to do with uh, the reward payment. The reward is offered for any information leading to the arrest of the suspect, period. We encourage you to call Crime Stoppers and submit your tip. Thank you. Thank you. We will now open the floor to questions beginning with CBC Calgary. Okay, we'll move on to City News, Calgary. Okay, and then moving on to Bill with CTV. Hello, uh, thanks for taking it. Can you hear me okay? Hello, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Uh, excellent. Uh, I just, yeah, I just wanna ask, the, uh, this $100,000 reward, is this a standard reward? And, and it seems like a big sum. I'm just wondering why this case um, and, uh, and why the, the high reward? Thank you, Bill, for the question. Uh, Bolo program standard rewards are at $50,000. Now for uh, cases uh, for which uh, suspects have uh, links to organized crime, we're always wanting to beef up our rewards to $100,000. Uh, this, uh, this seems to be the case in this case that the suspect was affiliated to uh, an organized criminal organization. 
Uh, so this $100,000 reward is not standard. Uh, out of 14 cases we've, we've launched so far uh, since 2018, two of them have uh, had uh, rewards at that level. Thank you. Thank you. And if, if I could, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead, uh, Martin. <laughs> sure, thank you. Just to um, uh, build on what Max was saying, um, <clears throat> Mr. Granada was connected to a, uh, an organized crime group uh, in Calgary uh, that was responsible for numerous uh, homicides and they uh, possess a, certainly a, a risk to public safety and we're very grateful with the BOLO program to enhance the reward to the maximum amount uh, as we believe that uh, the public safety in Calgary will be enhanced with his apprehension. Thank you. Martin, if you could hold on for one second there, I got a quick one for you there, if you don't mind. Um, sure. Can you talk a little bit about uh, about where you think he may be? I know you've you've referenced it a bit. It's in some of your materials, but where, what what's your best understanding of where people may see him? Our best information right now is that uh, he remains in the province of, in Alberta, uh, likely in Calgary or Edmonton. Uh, we do know that uh, the organized crime group that he is associated to uh, does have direct ties to the uh, Lower Mainland of British Columbia and also internationally into Southeast Asia. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to Global Calgary. Any questions? Okay, and then on to Post Media. Hi, uh, this is Stephanie with Post Media. Um, kind of a similar question to what was asked, but how confident is CPS that um, Granado is still in Calgary um, with the campaign? Um, you said the campaign is focused in Calgary, Edmonton, and uh, Alberta. The um... The benefit of working with the BOLO uh, campaign is that the uh, the campaign, the amplification campaign can be very flexible and can be responsive to the information we receive uh, through the tips. Right now we are concentrating on the, uh, the Calgary and Edmonton area, uh, but uh, with new intelligence and information that comes in, uh, we can certainly redirect the amplification campaign to any community uh, within our country or even internationally. Uh, thank you, no follow-ups. Okay, and 660 News, if you have any questions. Okay, have we missed anyone? Hi, it's Tracy with Global News. Go ahead, Tracy. Uh, I just wanted to ask about how cooperative uh, the first person who was arrested uh, in this murder has been. And just wondering if I could follow up on the charges that they were charged with in accessory after the fact, um, and if we can explain those a little bit. So in, re in relation to the uh, level of cooperation so far, um, we have received uh, no cooperation. Um, that's why we're relying on the, uh, the public to come forward uh, with tips to further the, uh, the investigation. Uh, in relation to the uh, charges against uh, Mr. True, obviously it's uh, before the, the courts and uh, he has been charged with accessory after the fact of murder. As far as the exact, exact details of, uh, of his actions, uh, because it's before the court, court process, I can't get into those specific details. Um. Martin, if I may, it's uh, Bill McFarland with CTV again. Uh, there's a video on that um, on the Bolo website now on uh, Granado. Uh, it looks like it's uh, it was taken on on the day or at the time of uh, of the shooting. What can you tell us about that video or what that video is? Well, we were very fortunate to receive some some really good uh, video uh, at the time of the homicide, which is further our investigation. Um, we certainly can let the public know that we, uh, we know that several shots were fired. Uh, they were actually captured by a witness uh, in the area. Uh, you may hear that uh, in the video, which is obviously very disturbing. We're talking about a midday shooting in a residential community where, uh, where children and families were playing in the backyards. Uh, we obviously are very concerned about the actions taken by 
these individuals and the group that they're associated to. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, their organized crime group poses a significant risk to public safety in our community. Uh, I'm just wondering how many other times has CPS looked at um, partnering with Bolo? Is this the first time and, and could we see more campaigns like this in the future? This is the first time the Calgary Police Service has partnered with Bolo. Uh, we were waiting for the uh, the right case and speaking to our law enforcement partners uh, with the RCMP, uh, Edmonton Police Service and Toronto Police Service. The Bolo program has been successful in assisting their investigations and we're very hopeful uh, that we'll have the same positive result here. And uh, as far as the future, uh, absolutely. Uh, we'd be looking to partner with Bolo um, with the right case. Are there extra resources being um, brought in or will this be with Crime Stoppers in order to deal with an increase in calls that you guys might receive given the reward? So so obviously we're going to work very collaboratively with with crime stoppers and also we've created a robust uh, reproach in, internally uh, to deal with the uh, the tips that we're expecting and we'll also be working with other law enforcement partners uh, nationally as well as internationally if needed i just have one more question and this is for the bolo program uh, in regards to what sparked this program in the first place uh, its launch was in 2018 then Yes, uh, so uh, the Canadian Charitable Organization uh, we're affiliated to is called the Stéphane Chrétien Foundation. Stéphane Chrétien is the founder, president and CEO a, of a very large uh, uh, corporation called Garda World. Uh, it's a, uh, a, a Canadian business success story. Uh, Mr. Chrétien uh, created his own uh, private foundation in 2006. And uh, between 2006 and 2015, the foundation was uh, basically, uh, you know, meeting its requirements with the Canada Revenue Agency by making donations. Uh, but Mr. Cretier is certainly a, a man who's passionate about public safety and wanted uh, director, this board of directors to uh, come up with a project that will be active in public safety in Canada. So uh, uh, the, the idea was put on the table in 2017 uh, and developed and we launched with a pilot project in Toronto in 2018. Uh, just to be clear, this private foundation is uh, completely separate from uh, Garda World, the private uh, corporation uh, that uh, my, uh, my uh, chair uh, also uh, holds. Uh, so it is not some major corporations in Canada have their own foundations. This is not the case here. We're talking about two completely, completely separate entities that are not affiliated. And I just have one more question for Martin. Are you able to name the organized crime group uh, that this individual is involved with or, or may have been dealing with? Uh, yes, um, the group that uh, he's associated to is known in the uh, community and the police service as the uh, the FK. All right, thanks, Martin. Thank you. Do we have any other questions? If not, then I will uh, thank you all for joining us and have a good afternoon. <laughs>